once happened. Gautama, the Buddha, you heard of him? Hmm? Yes. Everybody heard of Gautama? Yes. So, uh, Buddha is not his name, his name is Gautama Siddhartha. He became a Buddha. So he is now the only Buddha in the world. There have been thousands of them and they still are. So Gautama was sitting in a large congregation of people one morning, an early morning, earlier than this, okay? A man arrived and stood there in the shadows. This man is a great devotee. He is a devotee of Rama. You heard of Rama? Hmm? Not Rami, Rama. Rama is uh, one of the most popular deities in India. If you do not already know this, in India we have thirty-six million gods and goddesses. It's a very rich country. So, uh, he is a great devotee of Rama. The devotees in India, not now and not everybody, but those who take this seriously, they will not utter any other word than the name of God that they believe in. So if they want you to come, they'll say, Ram Ram. If they want you to go, Ram Ram. If they want something, Ram Ram. No other word but Ram. Their clothes are all printed Ram Ram, they utter only Ram Ram, they live Ram Ram. They devoted their whole life to God. You are smart, you are not like that. You kept, you kept God like insurance. Just in case something goes wrong, I have also paid my premium. <laughs> hmm? Everything that you need to do, you do it yourself. You kept God like insurance. You are smart. But this man invested his whole life in God, total. Age is passing away, little doubt has come. Are there people here who don't believe in God? Nobody? No leftists? No? Only one? Okay. What's your name? John. John. Only John? Nobody else? <laughs> so, uh, little doubt has come, he knows there is God. Just a little doubt, suppose there is no God. I'm wasting my whole life doing Ram, Ram, Ram. See, this doubt will come to you only if you invest whole your, your whole life. You invest just ten minutes in a week, then you will not get this doubt, it's all right, what's the problem? <laughs> If you invest your life completely into God, then within three days doubt will come. Am I wasting my life just doing this? And uh, there are other people who don't believe. See, look at this John. He doesn't believe. For him also sun comes up in the morning. For him also flowers blossom. From him, him also life happens. Looks like he's having a better time than me. It's a little doubt, he knows there is God, just a little doubt. Now there is an enlightened being here, he wants to confirm. But after being a well-known devotee for a long time, because he did not just go to the temple, he built many temples. At this stage in his life, how to ask whether there is God or not now? So he came early morning, stood in the shadows there and asked this inevitable question, is there God? Gautama looked at the man and gave a clear, emphatic no. Here this large congregation of disciples, this has always been a struggle in their, their mind, is there God or no God, is there God or no God? Oof! One big relief. Whenever they ask such a question to Gautama, he just becomes silent, he doesn't say anything. For the first time he gave a clear, 
answer, no God. Joy spread across the congregation. Just the struggle, is there God or no God is over. The enlightened one has declared there is no God. The message spread across the town. Through the day, celebrations happened because just imagine the freedom of it. No God means nobody sitting up there keeping accounts of what you did and what you did not do to punish you, burn you in hell or do this or that. Life is completely yours. So through the day, celebrations happened. Everybody is in great joy. The evening, once again the congregation is sitting, another man came. He also is standing in the shadows. This man is a Charvaka. Charvaka means, in India there are groups of people who are known as Charvakas. These Charvakas are out and out materialists. They don't believe anything other than what they can see. <coughs> Probably this is the only culture that allows this. You will see actively missionaries of God going from village to village spreading their God message and missionaries of no God going from village to village arguing with people and proving to them how there is no God. Probably this is the only culture that allows that anywhere else they would be killed. <laughs> so if you want you can spread God or if you want you can spread no God. This is true democracy, you know. <laughs> this has been there like this for thousands of years. People come and set up arguments in the village and they prove to you how there is no God. So this is an expert charvaka. Whatever kind of believer you are, if you talk to him for ten minutes, he'll prove to you no God. For thousands of people, he's proved no God, no God, no God. Age is passing. Little doubt has come. Suppose there is God. When I go there, will he leave me? And all these believers say that he's got all kinds of torture equipment up there. So because I went about proving to everybody that he doesn't exist, he may torture me much more. He knows there is no God. He's proved to thousands of people there is no God. Just a little doubt. Now there's an enlightened being here, he wants to confirm. So he appeared there in the evening. And he asks the same inevitable question, is there God? Gautama looked at the man and said, yes. Once again turmoil started. Morning he said, no God, they were all really happy. In the evening he says, there is God. So what's the game Gautama is trying to play? See, if you believe there is God or if you believe there is no God, you are in the same boat. You believe something that you do not know. I believe this, you believe that, it doesn't make any difference. You can believe whatever you want. Yes? Everybody can believe whatever they want. It need not have anything to do with reality as such. If you see, I do not know, the longing to know will arise within you. If the longing arises, the seeking arises. If the seeking arises, the possibility of knowing exists. I do not believe that God does not exist. I know for sure <laughs> He does not exist. 
and thank God <laughs> that he does not exist. <laughs> Because the existence of God would have created so many problems, difficulties, that life would have been almost impossible. You may not have looked from this angle that I am going to talk to you. Perhaps nobody has ever tried to look it from this angle. The Christians say God created the world. In fact, the hypothesis of God is needed for the creation. The world is there. Somebody must have created it. Whoever created it that creator is God. But do you see the implication? If world is created, then there can be no evolution. Evolution means creation continues. Think of the Christian story. God created the world in six days and then on the seventh day he rested. Since then he has been resting. The whole creation was completed. In six days. Now from where evolution can have a possibility? Creation means finished. The full point has arrived on the sixth day. The full point and after that there is no possibility of evolution. Evolution implies that creation is not complete. Hence, the possibility of evolving. But God cannot create an incomplete world. That will be going against God's nature. He is perfect, and whatsoever He does is perfect.
neither he is evolving nor the world is evolving. Everything will be at a standstill, dead. This is the reason why popes were against Charles Darwin, because that man was bringing an idea which is going to kill God sooner or later. Those popes were perceptive in a way. They could see the far away implications of the idea of evolution. Ordinarily you will not be connecting both creation and evolution. What connection is there? God and Charles Darwin, there is connection. Charles Darwin is saying that the creation is an ongoing process. The existence is always imperfect. It is never going to be perfect. Only then it can go on evolving, reaching new peaks, new dimensions, opening new doors, new possibilities. God had finished his work in six days. And not long before, four thousand four years before Jesus Christ was born. It must have been first January, <laughs> Monday, <laughs> Because we manage to fit God into everything that we have created, He has to follow our calendar. If you ask me, I will say it must have been Monday, 1st April. <laughs> the fool's day, because that day seems to be absolutely suitable for doing such an act of creating a complete ready-made existence. If evolution becomes impossible, life loses all meaning. There is no God. But that does not mean that I am an atheist. Certainly I am not a theist. I am saying there is no God. But that does not mean that you jump to the opposite of the atheist. The atheist says there is no God also. But when I say there is no God, 
and the atheist like Charvaka, Karl Marx, Lenin, Epicurus, when these people say there is no God, there is a tremendous difference between my statement and their statement. Their statements are absolutely similar. Because I say at the same moment that there is godliness, Charvaka will not agree on that point. Epicurus, Marx, other atheists will not agree on that point. To them, denying God means denying consciousness. To them, denying God means the world is simply matter and nothing more. And whatever you see as consciousness is only a byproduct of certain matters put together, just a byproduct. Take those things apart and the byproduct disappears. It is just like a bullock cart. You take the wheels away, you take other parts away. And each time you can ask, is this the bullock cart? When you take the wheels apart, certainly the answer will be, it is not. No part is the whole. You can take by and by each part and remove the whole and no single part was the bullock cart. And in the end you can be asked now, where is the bullock cart? Because we have not removed it. You have never said at any point that bullock cart is being removed. Bullock cart was just only a combination. It had no existence of its own. It was a byproduct. That's what Marx means when he says consciousness is a epiphenomenon. Remove the body, remove the brain, remove all that constitutes a man's being. You will not find anything like consciousness. And when you have removed everything, it is not that the consciousness will be left behind. It was only a combination. You have taken the combination apart. So when I say there is no God, I am not agreeing with Marx or Epicurus. I am certainly not agreeing with Jesus, Krishna, Moses, Muhammad. When they say there is God, because they use God as a person. Now, to think of God as a person 
It's just your imagination. The God of the Chinese has a Chinese face. And the God of the Negroes has a Negro face. And certainly the God of the Jews must have a Jewish nose. <laughs> it can't be otherwise. And if horses think about God, their God will be a horse. So this is just projection. Giving personality to God is your projection. <laughs>